In this video, I will teach you about Bracket notation, a notation that was invented by the famous physicist Paul Dirac and is used throughout quantum mechanics textbooks and papers. It is therefore essential knowledge for anyone wanting to gain a deep understanding of the subject. By the end of this video, you will know why operations like the following make sense mathematically. Okay, so the pivotal first step towards grasping Brockett notation is to understand the Ries representation theorem. It is a mathematical theorem that relates inner products on Hilbert spaces to something called linear functionals. Now recall that in a previous video, I explained that any Hilbert space in quantum mechanics will be equipped with an inner product. Though this is a common notation that is used for an inner product, there is an alternative notation that is commonly used by physicists, which has a bar instead of a comma in the middle. This notation is more natural for Brockett notation, so we will stick with this one for the time being. Now any inner product takes two elements that live in the Hilbert space and maps them to a complex number. A linear functional, on the other hand, maps only one function from the Hilbert space to a complex number. And when it does this, it must satisfy the two properties of being linear. Now these could be maps of any kind as long as they are linear. A couple examples would be the zero map, which sends all functions to the number zero, or the integral map, which sends all integrable functions to their integral over a specific domain. And the collection of all of these linear functionals that can be defined for a specific Hilbert space actually forms itself another vector space, one that is called the dual space. So for any quantum system, you can formulate a specific Hilbert space to describe the states of that system. And each Hilbert space that can be constructed will also have an associated dual space. This is where the Ries representation theorem becomes very important. It provides an extremely useful way of relating elements of the dual space to elements in the original Hilbert space. The theorem states that if you pick any element in the dual space, and remember, everything that lives in this dual space is a linear functional that sends a function in the Hilbert space to a complex number. So let's say you pick a functional that we'll call L, then you can always find exactly one vector in the Hilbert space, let's call it phi sub L, such that whenever you take the inner product of phi sub L with a vector psi in the Hilbert space, the complex number that this inner product maps to will be the exact same number that you get if you apply the linear functional L to the same vector psi. So the action of the linear functional L is equivalent to taking the inner product using the vector phi sub L. And this will work for all of the vectors in the entire Hilbert space. So we can always associate any element in the dual space with a unique element in the Hilbert space. And because of this association, Paul Dirac suggested the use of the following notation. Since there will always be a unique phi sub L associated with every L, let's just say L equals phi sub L. And we will write it like this. And since the inner product notation consists of a bracket, we will call the first half of it a bra and the second half of it a ket. And we'll just completely forget about the letter C. Now this is really just a notational trick. There's absolutely no meaning to something that is half of an inner product. We are just creating a new notation here. One that will turn out to be very useful in certain circumstances. So at this stage in the development of the notation, we are saying that a linear functional L is equal to the bra phi sub L. And this is totally legitimate because of the Ries representation theorem. The next stage is that for any function psi that lives in the Hilbert space, instead of just writing it as psi, we will dress it up with the notation of being a ket. So what this notation does now is that it reconceptualizes our picture of the Hilbert space and its dual space. It changes the picture of a Hilbert space with elements that are all functions 
and a dual space of linear functionals to an equivalent yet alternative picture where the elements of the Hilbert space are now kets and the elements of the associated dual space are bras. So in this new picture, we can now select a bra and apply it to a ket. And this is the exact same thing as applying a linear functional to the function in the original Hilbert space. And it is also the same thing as taking the inner product between phi sub L and psi. And again, although this appears like notational trickery, it is totally fine because the Ries representation theorem tells us that we can always consider an inner product as equivalent to the action of the associated linear functional. Okay, so you might be saying to yourself now, great, we can always do this and mess around with inventing new notation. But why in the world would we want to do this? What benefit does it bring? To put it simply, if you're trying to do rigorous math proofs, this notation will probably only be cumbersome and sometimes even cause confusion. However, if you are more interested in calculations and solving physics problems, this notation can be a huge time saver. And to finish off this video, I will show you how through one simple yet common example. It is a fact of linear algebra that any vector psi we take in the Hilbert space can be written as a linear combination of basis vectors E sub i in this manner. This is the standard mathematical way to write this. However, if we decide to use Broquet notation to express this, then we need to make sure psi and e sub i are written as kets, and the inner product is written with a bar instead of a comma. Now, since the inner product is just a complex number, we can move it to the right. Here is where Broquet notation will prove to be useful. In this notation, we can consider inner products as equivalent to a bra acting on a ket. So we can split apart the inner product and write it like this instead. And since the ket psi is the same for every element of the sum, we can pull it out of the sum. And now we can view this entire object in the parentheses as an operator acting on the ket psi. But what is this equation saying? We simply have an operator acting on the ket psi and resulting in the same ket psi. So the operator, must be the identity operator. And we now have an alternative way to insert the identity operator into any of the equations we encounter. And if you are working through a lot of quantum mechanics problems, you will quickly notice how helpful the identity operator written in this form can be. Now this is just one example of the usefulness of Broquet notation, but there are many other ways it will prove to be useful. Although it may seem strange to some who prefer to work in a more traditional, mathematically clean notation, I highly encourage you to take the time to know Broquet notation and to get comfortable using it. You will find it to be an invaluable tool in your quantum mechanics toolkit.